Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? It is Master of the TDS, and I am joined by my lovely wife... Riding Raven! And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Indeed! The segment where we summarize all the Psycho for you. Just a scattering of topics throughout the week, all summarized into a neat little package for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You're welcome! So, we are going to be scheduling a live stream at some point soon within either this week or the next week for our 2,000 subscriber... Celebration. We have passed 2,000 subscribers. We made it before the end of the year. Uh-huh. And we are incredibly grateful to all of you. Yes. Uh, we got a couple topics to discuss today. Last week, we ended up doing a Gothic Therapy Rewind of our 2022, you know, most talked about or most popular topics, I guess. Mostly because uh, New Year's weekend had no topics to cover. Yeah. So you guys can watch that if you'd like. I'll try to make sure that it is linked below. But this week we have enough news to make this, so without further ado... Let us begin with Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner is celebrating his 52nd birthday with a message of gratitude to his medical care team. The actor is continuing to recover from injuries sustained in a snowplow accident. Thank God he's alive. Now, as you can see here, he says, Thanks all for your kind words. I'm too messed up to now to type, but I send love to you all. Now... This is not the post that went for his, like, 52nd birthday. It just happened to be that when we're reporting on this, that was the most recent news. Yeah. Now, the reason we aren't showing that image is because, you know, I really don't want to paint him in a bad light. For those of you who don't know, it was a snowplow accident where he uh, was helping somebody with a having car trouble. And the snowplow accidentally uh, ran over his leg. Yeah. He ended up losing a lot of blood and with some serious injuries. Hopefully he'll be able to walk again, but at least he's alive. Yeah, at least he's alive. But because of his serious injuries, he didn't look very good in that image. And I didn't want to disrespect him like that. I understand why he posted. I understand everything. And I just, I, I wanted to talk about him in a way that didn't make him look super out of it. I mean, part of it was probably sedatives and painkillers. I don't blame him. Like, again, people were really worried about him. And look... People, it's no surprise that Raven and I, we don't necessarily love the Marvel Cinematic Universe or where it's gone. But we have nothing against the actors. Well, depending on which actor you talk about. But, Fair point. Uh, of course, even if it was an, an actor we hated, we wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them. They're, they're human beings. Yeah, wishing death upon someone is only reserved for our worst enemies. And unfortunately, people on Twitter were not very happy about or very nice about this, but thankfully he's all right. Uh, I, the extent of his injuries are not ne necessarily known. We do know it was his leg and, and other areas, but that's all we can really say at this point. Um, our thoughts and prayers to him. Indeed, and his family. And his family. I hope he gets a, a full recovery or as full of a recovery as he can get based on the circumstances and we don't know. Yeah. But I'm glad that he's alive. I'm glad that he's doing okay. And... Let's avoid any snowplow accidents going forward. Amen. Moving on. Next up, we have The Bad Batch Season 2. It's too white in here! Whee! Deal with it! Lucasfilm and Star Wars officially admitted they caved to numerous activists that accused them of racism over their character designs in the animated series Star Wars The Bad Batch. In the previous season, if nobody remembers, people were complaining that they were too dark. Or was it also that they were too white? I don't know. I don't remember, but it was something about how their, uh, the, their skin tone when they are literally modeled after a Hawaiian actor. Here's here's something I have to say. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when I watch, even if it's animated or whatever, I, I don't really care what skin color the person is. Nor do I. I mean, unless we're talking about an anime where the person's an alien and then it's hard to not notice and then there's like different skin color, but whatever. Uh, normally when I watch a show like that, it's, it's, it's not the thing I focus on. I know. Makes you wonder who the real racists are. What I do know is this. Uh, Disney, you made your own bet. I find it hilarious that you caved to these people because it will never be enough. And just goes to show you that this season they're already making a fuss about it too. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because these people don't actually care about your product. They care about what your product can do for them. So when they see someone who doesn't match their skin tone or isn't whatever, that's what they focus on. How's the show? How's the story? I don't know, because all I've heard about is how it's too white! And also the first fem canon female clone. Please, somebody, tell me what the purpose of Omega is in this thing besides diversity hire. What does she actually contribute to the team? Girl power. Ugh! I hate her. So much. Mostly yeah. because of my own character, who's actually respectful to the lore of no female clone troopers. And is not a diversity hire. Whatever. Look, I don't really care as much about Omega. I don't really care about much about this show. And as you guys know, it's no surprise to you that, you know, I, at least I personally, don't really care about Star Wars anymore. I just find this ridiculous and funny because literally these are the, this is the audience you cater to, Disney. This is the audience you claim to want. Turns out the audience you claim to want is much smaller than you think it actually is, if it even exists at all. Mm. And then when you cater and pander to these people, it will never be enough. Guaranteed, they'll find something else wrong once you change things. And making things darker or lighter shouldn't be a problem because it is a show about fictional... Space aliens. Space aliens and soldiers and whatever. Who cares? They do, apparently. Blow something up. Show me a lightsaber battle. I don't care about this kind of stuff. Now, I'm not saying just blatantly show me blowing things up and lightsabers and no story, but I'm saying the point is, it's like, I don't really look at them and go, you know what would make this show better? If they were less white. No. It's ridiculous. Even Yoda is speechless. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next client. And of course, it's Ezra Miller again. Surprise, surprise, he's back. Ugh. While Henry Cavill's Superman and Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam may not play a part in the new DCU, Ezra Miller's Flash could still have a role to play, according to a recent report. Bad idea. Very bad idea. Now, we all know the story about what happened with Henry Cavill and whatever, and we do know that they're trying to reboot things, but... One of the things that's been the biggest controversy is the Ezra Miller situation mm -hmm. and all the stuff that he's done. And yes, I'm using he because if anybody, I've been attacked on Twitter about this, but if you guys don't know already, there are plenty of articles about it. He doesn't actually call himself they, them behind the scenes, nor does he recall anybody else's pronouns, and he only dates women. So you tell me if it's not a diversity shield. It's a totally a shield. That way he can get away with everything. Yeah, and what's annoying is when there's allegations about things, we have to get rid of people. With him, there's literally evidence, video evidence. And they're like, well, he's in therapy now and he's taking it seriously and he hasn't acted out. So we might continue with him. That doesn't change anything. Ma going to therapy doesn't magically fix things. It can be a helpful tool to help yourself, but it's not something that you just magically go into and suddenly you're cured. And again, it doesn't matter if he even is doing better. I'm glad to hear it. he's doing better. But it's about the message this sends. You basically are saying that because he identifies a certain way and whatever, that he can get away with whatever it is. But other people with allegations and whatever, with no actual proof, uh, they get thrown out, but he gets to stay. And also someone who has been waiting to play a role for, what, 10 years now? Has to be kicked out of the studio after announcing that he's back in that role. Such a bad idea. It's really going to bite them hard. I don't know if it'll bite them hard or not. What I do know is that they're going for a very different DCU now, and that's their choice. And regardless of what ends up happening to the DCU, which again, mistakes aside... Keeping Ezra Miller around is not even about whether he's a good actor or not. It's about the message that sends to other people. That if you identify the correct way and you have the right pronouns, you have the right whatever, you can stay, but other people have to go. And that's not okay. You cannot have a double standard here. You can try, but people are going to call you out on it. I am going to predict right now, it doesn't matter how good the Flash ends up being. People will not go see it just because it's Ezra Miller. Exactly. And people will not show up to the next Superman movie just because Henry Cavill got fired. 
Well, we don't know that for oh, sure. Oh, I'm certainly not going to the next one because Henry Cavill got fired. I understand that. And I'm not saying that that's not a valid point. What I'm saying is we don't exactly know what their plan is in regards to Superman. They've said a lot of things, but we don't know. There may be plenty of other reasons, like, for example, the fact that it might be an origin story again, and people don't really like that. So that would be a reason, beside from Henry Cavill not playing the role, that you wouldn't want to go see it. I still think it's a bad idea. And I'm not alone there. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I would have liked to see him too, but, you know, it is what it is, and we won't know until they actually do something. Uh, but keeping Ezra Miller would be a huge mistake, and you really should not even entertain the idea at all. Yeah, they just keep on making bad decisions. Actions have consequences. Ezra Miller has committed crimes. There is evidence of his crimes. He is not someone who should just be rewarded. It is someone who you need to say, hey, you know, we'll get this movie out because we need the money, but then we're going to recast you. And that's how it should be. And I'm not advocating for him to lose his job, but you should not be able to walk away scot-free. Oh, just a little therapy and he'll be fine. No. Not how it works. He needs a straight jacket. Whatever he needs, I hope he finds it at some point, but it, hopefully it's not in the movie industry or you'll be burning money. Indeed. Moving on. And speaking of DC, a.k.a. Dead Company, we have the Joker. Well, what have we here? I don't want to say it. I think you're pregnant. Uh. I think you're right. Do we have a good OBGYN we use? God, why? DC has released the latest story about the Clown Prince of Crime, which explores different plots and subplots for the Joker, including him getting pregnant. Somehow! Men don't get pregnant! Well, apparently what happens is uh, the Joker wants to have a uh, heir, and he wants to have it be like a genetically similar to him. So he goes to Zatanna and asks her, and Zatanna obviously is like, no, and basically curses him so that he can, the only, that no one can have his child, but that makes it so that he has his own child. I don't understand. And he ends up puking out mud, which becomes a clone of himself in the form of a baby somehow. Now, I don't know how it works, and I, I don't know how it works. I don't want to know how it works. I just think it's disgusting and horrible, and just why? Well, I want to clarify something that not a lot of people have touched on, is that this story is not a mainline story. It is a added-on story like some comics get towards the end. That doesn't excuse this. I think it's a very strange thing to do, and I think it's a very odd thing to even put in the book. Understatement. But we do have to recognize that it's not canon, it's not whatever, so making a huge statement about it is not necessarily the case. I think it's a very strange way of doing things, and I think that it's something that absolutely makes no sense. There's no purpose of this in the comic. None. I've seen some strange storylines in comics. This one takes the cake. There's zero reason for it to be there. Are we going to throw a fit? No, because it's not a mainline story, but... This is obviously some kind of propaganda, and it's just gross. No kidding! Put aside whether or not you... Whatever beliefs you have around gender and sexuality. It's just a weird thing to even picture. Imagine Batman pregnant. You wouldn't want to see that either. No. Hell, the Spider-Woman pregnant comic was weird enough. Let's not get on to that, because Twitter hates you if you say something like that. Oh yeah, fair point. I only have so many videos of people dancing that I can use to make fun of you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to have to limit it just so you know I have enough to, to, to go around. Uh -huh. we'll see. But yeah, this is weird. I want to move on before it gets any weirder. Next, we have a client that will properly cleanse my palate. Renfield. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Behave. I'm, what? I'm looking forward to this one, actually. I didn't think I would, but I am. Behave. Meow. Universal has released the first trailer for Renfield, a Dracula movie starring Nicolas Cage. Despite people's curiosity about Cage will fill the role of Dracula, the film's protagonist and namesake is Nicholas Holt, who plays Renfield. And it actually impressed me. Now, we've reported on this before, and we were kind of not sure of how this would go. Uh, I actually think they did a good job with this. Now, whether or not we will see that in the actual movie or the movie will be good i don't know i'm not it's too soon to say 
I think closer to when we get some reviews and more trailers, I think then we can make a decision of whether or not we'll see it in theaters. Because I think I would like to. Partly because what really got me, like at first I wasn't, I was totally against the idea of Nick Cage playing Dracula because I just didn't think it would work. But seeing him in this trailer and knowing that this movie is more of a comedy than proper horror, actually it makes sense that he would play a Dracula, a very over the top evil type of Dracula. He actually plays that quite well. But what really got me in the trailer was them showing Renfield eating a spider. Before we continue, just to give some context, this is a movie where basically it's centered more on Renfield and his story and him wanting to get out of the toxic relationship that is his relationship with Dracula. Being Dracula's servant. But Renfield eating spiders is from the book. Because he was in the asylum, back in the Victorian era, he was in the asylum because he believed that eating live creatures would give him power. And he would constantly evolve the creatures that he ate. Think old lady who swallowed a fly, except he was the one doing the eating or making the other creatures eat. First he had flies, then he had spiders to eat the flies, then a trained birds to eat the spiders, and then asked the doctor for a cat to eat the bird. And then when the doctor refused, he ate the bird himself. So yeah, that is what caught my attention. That's what caught my eye. That's what made me were like, wait, what? We're actually getting a movie that's somewhat lore accurate? Okay, I'm sold. One thing that sold me was that at the end, he's like in a therapy session. And again, it's not as cringe as it sounds. But at the end, uh, you can see Nicolas Cage's Dracula about to come in and he can't. So the person goes, oh, are you here for the meeting? Come on in. And Renfield's like, no! no! Because if you are familiar with vampire lore, vampires cannot enter rooms or housing unless they are invited. Uh-huh. So Renfield knew if he, they invited him in, that it would be a problem. So look, whether it's a comedy or not, whether it ends up being good or not is besides the point. The fact is what we've seen from the trailer shows that they're wanting to be accurate to the lore of vampires and that they're wanting to make something that looks like fun. Now, again, we have fallen prey to this before with, for example, the Munsters. Yeah, but I have a feeling this is going to be the opposite of what the Munsters turned out to be. We'll have to wait and see. But regardless, at least these people aren't focusing on what gender the person is or what sexuality the person is. They're focusing on the story and they're showing that they're wanting to be lore accurate. And that alone has won some of my respect. Whether the movie will prove to be something we actually like to watch or something good is besides the point. You got my attention. Let's see if you can keep it. Indeed. Let's see. <laughs> Moving on. And next, another somewhat palate cleanser. Wednesday! My little death trap gets to carry this show for another season. Will I finally get to play Pugsley? After speculation about the hit show's fate, Netflix has confirmed Wednesday has been renewed for a season two and will return for another round. Yay! We still have to put out the rest of season one. Yeah, I'm working on the episode four review. The issue with this show and getting it out is not just the show is like not good, as we've said multiple times in our reviews, which you can watch for more understanding. It's not a terrible show, but it's not the best thing ever either. It's somewhere in between. Exactly. There are some episodes where I found myself getting very, very invested and actually enjoying it. And then they would do something that completely took you out of the story. And that's what annoyed me the most. Yeah. Now, I think Jenna Ortega carries the show. I was very surprised by Luis Guzman portrayal of Gomez, which we will discuss further in our episode five review. Yes, he really did impress me too. That was a very good Gomez. Catherine Zeta-Jones, on the other hand, is a horrible Morticia. And again, if you want to hear more details on what our actual opinions of the episodes are, we will be getting those reviews out. I am working on episode four at the moment. The reason it's so slow is because getting time to record it and then getting time to edit it is a little difficult with our schedules, but we will get them all out. Uh, will we review season two? Don't know. I think we'll probably get bullied into it. <laughs> Just like we're probably going to get bullied into Ironheart. No, I'm not watching Ironheart. They're going to make you. They can try. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Sorry. If I have to deal with Wednesday, I ain't doing it. We'll do season two of Wednesday before we do Ironheart. Mm, sure. I will say one thing. One of the things that's been going around around the show is that they want to make a romantic relationship between Enid and Wednesday. No. 
if that's what you watch the show for, then you need help. Proper psychological, psychiatric help. It's ridiculous that we have to have shows like that. You want to ship them, you want to do whatever, fine. But if that is the only reason, like, I was curious and went on Twitter and looked to see about Wednesday to find out that the news, whether it was reviewed or not, before I knew it was or not. And most of the hashtags for it were literally fan art of Enid and Wednesday doing things they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying that if you swing that way that you can't have those preferences. But shippers are literally the worst. But it's, if that's all we're seeing, it tells me a lot. It tells me that the portrayal of those two characters and a couple other elements of the show make the show actually interesting. As far as I'm concerned, the writing for the show has been subpar at best. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm finding it a little bit hard to do. But rest assured, we will get all the episodes out. We just ask you to bear with us as we make our way through it and have find the time to get those out. I'm going to hopefully try and get episode four out this week, but no promises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We also hope that Pugsley will actually get some agency. And again, we'll go into detail more on that in episode five, which has more of Pugsley's interactions. And we'll get to that at that point. We're not going to spoil anything for you guys now. Uh, if you want to watch the show, cool. Again, it's not terrible. It's not great. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. But I still don't understand why people love the dance so much. That was painful for me. Yeah. Well, again, if you want our more in-depth evaluation, wait for part four to come out, which should be, again, this week or the next. I'm doing my best to get it out when I have the time. And we can, you'll kind of figure out kind of what our opinions are more in detail. Yeah. Moving on. And lastly, we have Hogwarts Legacy. Don't buy this because it offends us. Too bad. I'm getting it anyway. I want it so much. Hogwarts Legacy is coming out soon, but that won't stop weirdos on Twitter from demanding you boycott the game because of opinions held by the creator of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling. So? I'm buying the game anyway. I mean, I'm waiting for it to go on sale, but I'm getting it anyway. I want this game so much! Now, I want to clarify something. We're not going to go into detail on what our opinions are of J.K. Rowling and what she's said. That's up to everybody to decide. The ridiculous part of this is that there are people online who are just like, you need to boycott it because of reasons. And they'll boycott it, and they have every right to do that. But then they'll demand other people do it, and it's like, no. We don't have to cater to you. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean we have to not like it. A good example is, just because Raven and I aren't as huge fans of Wednesday doesn't mean other people can't enjoy it. I mean, I did enjoy it towards the end. But it still had some cringy moments. But the point being is like the, the parallel I'm drawing here is that buying a video game is not something that should be a problem for other people. If you personally have problems with what's going on and you don't want to buy it, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. But demanding other people, you know, boycott it in solidarity with you or they're being hateful or whatever. No, that's you who's being hateful. Because guess what? Here's what I have to say about this, this kind of stuff. If you... If your enjoyment of something is based on whether or not the majority of people feel the same as you do, then you don't actually have an opinion. You just want people to believe what you want to believe. And if that's the case, when somebody comes along and says, hey, I don't agree with you, instead of having an argument and just discussing it, it becomes a, I need to find out how to prove you wrong to support my fragile narrative. And if that's the case, you never actually were a fan, you never actually wanted any of this kind of stuff, and you should just do your own thing and leave everybody else alone. What he said. I'm still getting the game. Yeah, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of Harry Potter. I don't, I don't mind it. I've read the books, I've watched the movies. If there's another book that comes out that's not The Cursed Child or whatever, I'm more than interested in giving it a read. And if there's another movie that comes out, I'm more than interested in looking at that, as long as it's not a reboot. Hmm. But the thing that makes the most for me is that my wife would like this game, and if my wife wants this game and I can get it for her, I'm going to get it for her. I don't care what people on Twitter say or get mad at me for. If you don't like it, I would ask you to stop whining and seek professional help instead because evidently you have some problems that need to be addressed because you're projecting them onto everyone and everything around you and that is not healthy, nor is it warranted. You would get it for me? Yeah, of course. Aw, thanks, love. You're the best. Of course I would. 
<laughs> Contrary to popular belief, just because she wants me to get random crazy things on Twitter and she tags me in doesn't mean I always say no. He doesn't. I mean, we actually finally found a space for the cauldron. We're not even going there. But we did! No, we're done. Conversation <laughs> over. But yeah, uh, I'm interested to see how this game will do. It looks good, but as we know, looks can be deceiving. I think the biggest you know, culprit of that is Cyberpunk 2077. I think they've actually learned from the release of Cyberpunk 2077 because the game is, from what I've heard, is actually complete. They're just using this entire month to work out all the bugs. And hopefully it'll be good. But look, what I said on Twitter stands, I say that because people are so adamant not to do this, I think that we should support this game. Whether you buy it or not is your choice. But I think that it's a game that's going to be very popular. It's already kind of the like the best-selling game. Mm -hmm. It's pre-orders anyway. And the more people cry about it on Twitter, the less people care about these people, and the more people will buy this game. So you're actually doing yourselves a disservice. It's probably best for you and everybody else if you shut up. Yeah, and even if they don't, sh and even if they do shut up, we're all gonna get the game anyway. You n you'll never outnumber the Potterheads, never. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it does. But um, again, I think it deserves our support. Oh yes. Moving on. And with that being our last client of the day, it's time for us to reveal the diagnosis of the week. And this week we have an interesting diagnosis for you. Do tell. So the diagnosis for this week is moral grandstanding. Please explain. So moral grandstanding is as it sounds. It's the use of moral talk to seek status or promote oneself. It's, for example, to be extra political or whatever and to like push a narrative, but really the purpose of it is to actually raise yourself up rather than actually be committed to whatever cause there might be. So um, we see this often in Hollywood, especially with companies and things, when people say things they don't like, whatever, they will use this moral grandstanding. Look, we have a gay kiss in this. Look, we have whatever. And the idea is they don't actually care about the communities that they're supporting. They just want to push their messages and they want to make it so that they can literally market off of it. And it actually causes more damage than it does help. But we see this so often, and that's why I feel this is the perfect diagnosis as the first diagnosis of this year, because I think we will see quite a lot more of this going forward from this point. That's why I think this is a great diagnosis for this week. I agree. And now we move on to the remedy of the week. And this week we are sending you to Epic Mike, a member of Geeks and Gamers, the co-founder of Epic Verse, so technically our co-boss? I don't know if that's what they would call it, but sure. Um, I don't know. I, I, Josiah is the boss. I guess I guess he's the vice boss. Oh, however it works. I don't know. I honestly, I don't like to think of anybody as a boss. I like to think of as more friends. But uh, Epic Mike has been really good to us. We met him in Orlando. He's a very nice guy and a supporter of our channel. Yeah, and uh, he has a Twitch channel where he goes live once in a while. He does. That's where he's most active. And if you want to see him. Uh, so we wanted to reach out, kind of, you know, show our support for him since he has shown his support for us. Mm -hmm. So grab your controllers, head on over there, and let him know that Gothic Therapy referred you. Indeed. But that is all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. But remember, when you do subscribe, your first session is free, so smash those buttons like they're bad kitties. And do consider joining us at the Dusk, Midnight, or Dawn level. We would appreciate it quite a lot. You can also find links to all of our socials in the description below, as well as links to our merch store and our Discord server known as The Clinic. Be sure to check them out. We recently dropped some fan-blaming bingo merch. For those who don't know, it is a very... It is something that I created on Twitter that... Uh, is well known. You may have seen it in videos. I am the creator of that. Uh, we do have some merch of that now. You can check below. You will see them links to it, or you can check out, you know, there should be some of our stuff down there, just if you're interested. But yeah, that's all we have for this week, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Gothic Therapy, out.